Hi, my name is Matea Jamnik and I'm Professor of Artificial Intelligence at the Department of Computer Science at the University of Cambridge. I'm also a Director of Postgraduate Education and I'm here today to introduce to you our postgraduate programme, the MPhil and Part 3 in Advanced Computer Science. So let me just share some information with you. So for, I'll start off by saying a little bit more about what is Advanced Computer Science Postgraduate Programme here in Cambridge. Uh, you can see here on the side our wonderful building at the night time with lots of uh, lighting. And um, first of all, our Advanced Computer Science Programme consists of uh, two types of students. There are what we call part three students, which are the uh, Cambridge uh, graduates, so people who have done an undergraduate degree in computer science in Cambridge before. And then there are the MPhil students, uh, so Master of Philosophy students, which are usually coming from other institutions and they, are, they tend to be in the top 5% of the cohorts from well-known places around the world. And here is a map for this year's cohort of the countries where they are coming from. Together between the part three and MPhil students, we have a, around just under 90 uh, students in our advanced computer science program. So if you do come to us and want to do the MPhil um, in ACS, then, then you will be surrounded by people from all over the place, all over the world. Our un, uh, overriding uh, priority and goal is that we prepare our MPhil students and Part 3 students for research. And so the program, ACS program is an excellent preparation for a PhD, or if you don't want to go into a PhD, you might want to go to the research and development uh, commercial lab. And typically when you have done an undergraduate degree, you wouldn't have focused very much on research skills. But the, if you are in theory, you need to have a solid background in, in the generic uh, uh, broad uh, literature and you need to have specific skill in very specific specialized methods. If you're in systems research, for example, you need practical skills and knowledge. And none of this is sort of, uh, there's, the, 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 there's little emphasis on research in undergraduate degrees to support this. The other motivation that might be there for you if you want to go into a PhD after the ACS is that funding is so difficult to come by. And if you have an MPhil or a part three, in ACS, this will put you in a good position to already prove your the, the fact that you, you are really interested in doing research and you have acquired skills already to do research. So you have an established research track record. And part of our program is to actually write really good proposals, really write scientific text, which is part of the uh, application for a PhD. Ultimately, you also want to try out whether research is for you because you probably have not had very much experience with research so far. So this will give you an opportunity to see whether you like doing work that, that a typical researcher does. Now, if you are already uh, an ACS student in Cambridge and are interested to do a PhD in Cambridge, you still must apply. There is not the natural progression from MPhil part three, in, uh, even if you get a distinction to get into automatically into a PhD, you do have to apply. Now, there is something uniquely uh, special about the ACS in Cambridge, which is that it's unlike in most places around the UK and probably around the world, it's very, very, very research oriented. So the emphasis is really on, on independent work and in giving you the skills to, to do research reading, to critically analyze it, to investigate un, uh, unexplored areas, to design approaches that are rigorous. Um, and the whole program is surrounded around uh, lots of different mini research projects. 
And th this is reflected in how we mark our, uh, your material at the, in the ACS program. So for example, in the top tier, there will be a lot of uh, searching for uh, original interpretation that is way beyond what has been taught in class, uh, or even in best cases, significant contributions uh, to the actual research field and, and so on. So our assessment criteria reflect the fact that the degree is um, uh, uniquely research-based. It is uh, an ever-evolving course uh, as science moves on, as technology moves on, we, we keep up to it, we are at the cutting edge of the research, uh, so we, the, we uh, respond appropriately in the design of the course. So we listen to students for their input and their interest uh, and uh, um, what kind of modules they would like, what the what they think about the content. We um, update the facilities and the curriculum regularly. Uh, so there are new modules every year. We buy new uh, hard, dedicated hardware as the needs arise. And also part of it is that uh, part of the ACS program is that you will uh, have the opportunity to go through a research skills program, which you tailor to your own interest. Uh, and you might want to pick up another language or you uh, want to uh, brush up on your media appearance skills and things like that. So the, these are all the opportunities that you will have and uh, form a core part of the ACS programme. So why would you choose to come to Cambridge and do the ACS in Cambridge? I'm going to say a little bit more about the content of the course. So the course is assessed by lecturers, but it's customized but from course to course because uh, you choose your modules. So there are you need to choose five taught modules. And the way you're going to be assessed in these taught modules is it's a mixture of things. All of them will have a research component. Even the five taught modules will have a research component for assessment. And marks come from uh, different, uh, uh, different sources, either from a mix of coursework or doing mini research projects or doing term papers or take home tests or in-house tests and so on. It depends on the module. And uh, most, or not most important, but <laughs> secondly, which accounts to equivalent of seven modules is the dissertation. So your research project that you will do. Um, throughout the mostly the second half of the course um, and this that and your dissertation that will be marked not only by your supervisor but also about uh, with by an independent internal examiner who hasn't been involved with your research project now pay, uh, so it's important to notice that that to in order to pass the ACS program uh, you must score, get a pass, so score more than 60% or 60% or more in both uh, taught modules and separately also in uh, the research project. So you can see that we are very much uh, emphasizing the, the, the work around research and um, developing you as an independent researcher. Um, when you come to do an ACS program here in Cambridge, you will, apart from this variety of modules and research projects and the research skills units, you will be exposed to uh, cutting edge research in all different areas of computer science, and you will be able to attend numerous um, events and uh, seminars and talks that happen in the department every day. So I, I'm pointing out here only the some of the programs. So the Wednesday seminars are our traditional um, departmental seminars where we get major figures in industry and academia to talk about their work. We have a whole host of different specialist initiatives. For example, Women at CL, we, where we have organized, we're organizing informal networking lunches and talks uh, that are open to everybody and are showcasing the research that is happening in the department. There are industrial tech talks where we invite our industrial partners to come to the department and talk about their research part of their, their work in their companies, and this is done through the uh, industry supporters clubs. And then there is a whole number of different research groups that uh, run uh, their own research seminars. So actually, when you're here, you could go to at least 
two, three or four sometimes uh, talks every day. Uh, you will have also many industry contact opportunities and the, I guess the flagship one is the annual recruitment fair when we, when we invite um, uh, 50 or more companies that visit uh, the computer lab and rec uh, that, uh, their whole purpose is to introduce their companies and essentially uh, recruit our students um, to go come and work for them. And so this is one event, but there's a, a huge number of opportunities throughout the year when you will be able to um, interact with industry. So ultimately, you know, we, we, our mission is to provide you, our excellent students with really good and substantial challenges. We know that you are ambitious and so are we. Uh, and, uh, but of course, um, alongside this uh, program of developing a, a, as an independent researcher, you, we, we, we must be aware and take care of your welfare and support. And in Cambridge, your college that you're gonna pick or be admitted to uh, is going to provide you a, 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 so support infrastructure in addition to what the departments provide, but at colleges specifically specialize in the social provision, well-being provision, relaxation, sports, pastoral care, and so on. And this is really uniquely Cambridge. So uh, you will want to know how to get into the uh, advanced computer science program in Cambridge. Well, um, you need to go through the usual admissions process through our website and the, the here is just the minimal requirements or what things that could help you. So first of all, you need to have a first class degree in your undergraduate degree in computer science and, or possibly a closely related field. Um, as part of your application, you'll need to write a short, really short, I think it's under 500 words, research proposal. And it's useful that in that process, you already think what kind of research is being done in the computer lab and who, uh, who could potentially be your uh, supervisor. Uh, you have to provide two uh, excellent academic references. And if you're applying for funding like Gates, you need to also have one uh, personal reference, an additional personal reference. And it's really important that you choose people who are your supporters and who can say meaningful things about your track record. Um, and of course, other aspects are also important because as you can imagine, people are applying here from the top universities who have been top in those universities to do this ACS. And so they need, the, you, you, you would be, well positioned to to expose the extraordinary things that you might be doing so for example you might already be involved in some involved in some capacity in some piece of research um, and it would be very good if you could highlight that in your application now funding is a different question i mean uh, it's hard there is a lack of funding as uh, all over the world but the university has a variety of funds um, and some have conditions that uh, are nationality dependent, but otherwise, uh, through your application, you can apply for funding too. You, in some cases, you might notice that the deadlines are slightly different. So um, go to the website and then read it and, and make sure that you meet those deadlines so that you can uh, compete for funding. So I think this is a brief tour of. Um, of our um, ACS course. Um, I hope that uh, if you're interested in research, this is a very good place to come. And we, uh, I would encourage you to apply through all the and all the information is available on the website.